What are we to make of the reading from the book of Genesis that we hear today? This account of the three sons of Noah and how they responded to their father's drunkenness and nakedness within his tent. It is a strange story. It is an embarrassing story. And we read it here in the midst of the fast at a time which seems to make very little sense. We are focusing otherwise on the cross, on the midpoint of the fast, on matters of repentance and self-discipline. And we hear this strange story about a drunk man who strips off his clothes and lies in his tent and yells at his sons when they come in and find him. But there is I believe a point that we can take from this, and indeed a profoundly important one. We say that when we fast, we engage in spiritual effort. Indeed, we say we engage in spiritual warfare. And this is certainly true. When we undertake to fast and to pray more, when we set aside this time for spiritual exertion, make no mistake, as we join battle against the passions, the demons come and meet us. They do not abandon the battlefield just because we happen to have decided it's time for us to make an effort. It is a strange thing those who have kept the fast strictly for many years and those who are new to the fast will find that life can seem to be going swimmingly, smoothly and easily. But no sooner do we say to ourselves, it is time to fast, it is time to pray, it is time to draw closer to God, then suddenly our lives are filled with everything that would separate us from God. Our minds run after strange passions. We find that our life is full of impediments, embodia, that would keep us from the church. And above all, strangely but consistently, we find that the peace which we have enjoyed with our brothers and sisters in the church is broken. We begin to hear all the things that everybody else is doing. We find ourselves butting heads with people that we got along with just fine a month ago. We find many occasions to take offense and to be shocked and to stumble because of our brothers and our sisters. And not least, of the sins to which we find ourselves especially prey is that sin of gossip. Now gossip, we preach many sermons against gossip, but what exactly is it? Is it simply enough to repeat something you have heard about somebody else and that is gossip? In theory, I suppose. And yet, we don't generally say, did you hear? So-and-so kept the fast strictly and their life is full of prayer and peace and joy. Isn't that wonderful? It would be nice if these were the things that we found ourselves saying, but it is not usually so. Instead, the stories that we tell are the ugly ones, the shameful ones, the embarrassing ones. I heard such and such was over at Red Robin. He was eating a hamburger, and it was clean Thursday. Cataratempi que é fagé creas aqui. Did you hear about their marriage having problems? These are the stories that we tend to tell. 
These are the temptations, indeed, that are presented to us as we engage in spiritual effort. We think, our minds are rushing after the evil things that other people do. And it is also tempting to take joy in those sins. To say, thank God, I'm better than her. This is the sin of Ham in the reading from the book of Genesis today. Not that he saw his father without his clothes on. Not that he recognized that he was intoxicated. But that his response to that was glee. He took joy in his father being taken down a peg or ten. So much so that he went and told his brothers, hey, come and see what the old man looks like. Not because it was wrong, or not because what Noah was doing was right, I should say. Not because there was not something to criticize, but because in taking joy in the evil that befell someone else, in the sin into which a brother or a sister has fallen. This is an easy way for us to leave the path of truth and righteousness and holiness in the course of the fast. Because we can be doing everything else right. We can be saying our prayers, going to the services, keeping the fast, giving alms to the poor. Everything can be right with us and we see someone else fall. And we say, ha ha, better you than me. <laughs> and we tell the story. And then guess what? We too have fallen. The demons have snared us and pulled us from the ladder. And they bring us down. This is the sin against, we are, against which we are warned tonight. And as we advance along the path to Pascha, let us consider carefully the way we allow our mind to run and the way in which we allow our mouth to run. If we see a brother or a sister who have fallen, let us reach down and give them our hand. Let us offer prayers for them. Let us conceal from the world their shame so that they may more easily be raised up and restored to the path. And above all, let us not spread the word of their shame. Let us not take joy in the sins of others. But together, in prayer, in humility, and in repentance, let us continue the path of salvation until we arrive at the Lord's glorious resurrection. Amen. Thank you for your patience. I know the service ran a little bit longer. Please stand, we will bless the food, and you all can begin. <laughs>